Four, generating electricity. In this section, we're going to look at how we can use what we've learned so far to actually make electricity. So the first thing we're going to think about are generators and alternators. So we've gone through in the last lesson the idea of a motor. And you can see here, if the electrons are traveling this way, um, this is for north to south. Uh, yeah, OK, so if the electrons are going that way, that means that the current in this side, I'm going to draw in red for the current. Um, no, I'm not. I'm going to draw green for the current. The current is going in the opposite direction to the electrons. So just a little recap there. Um, so you should be able to work out that the force will be acting upwards on this side, downwards on this side. So what I've got here is I'm using a magnetic field and a current to generate motion. Now, like I said before, the, exp the explanation of why this all happens is, is kind of weird and you need a lot of maths to explain it. But hopefully you can see in your head that logically, if I'm saying that having a magnetic field and having a current produces motion, I can actually do something quite clever. And what I can say is, well, what about if I have motion and have a magnetic field? What would I get then? What I would get is a current. So I can actually use a motor as a generator. All I need to do is say that rather than uh, spinning, rather than letting a motor spin from a current, if I spin the generator, if I spin the motor, it will produce a current um, pushing back at the battery. And um, that's the basic idea. Now, does it matter if I have this situation where I'm spinning a coil of wire? What about if I actually took these magnets here and I spun the magnets around the outside? So you imagine that the, the uh, wires stayed fixed and I spun the, um, the magnets around and around and around and around. And it turns out it wouldn't make any difference. So this is the idea of a dynamo. What I have in a dynamo is something that rotates here and it causes a permanent magnet to spin round, north, south, north, south, north, south. As it does that past a coil of wire, what I get is a current coming out one way and in the other way, and it generates electricity. Like I say, for CIE, GCSE, and even actually up to A level, the total understanding of why this happens isn't important. Even at A level, I'll teach you equations for it, but it's kind of a bit hand wavy. What you do need to know is the basic principle of what happens. So, if you can keep this definition in your head, you will find this really, really simple. The idea is, here's a wire, and I'm going to move it down. So it's going to cut these field lines, like that. Now what we find is, if a wire cuts through field lines, a voltage will be induced. Induced is the term for just created in a wire. Now, if I then have a complete circuit, that voltage will also give me a current. But the key thing is, I will get a voltage along here, along my bit of wire. What about if I move my wire in this direction? So I move it along the field lines. Yeah? Well, in this case, I set up here that where wire has to cut field lines. If it doesn't do that, it's not cutting any field lines, so I don't get any voltage and I don't get any current. So that comes to the key definition that you need to know, or the key thing that you need to understand for this bit. Basically, the size of the voltage induced is proportional to the rate of cutting of field lines. So straight away, you should be able to think, well, how can I make a generator more powerful? If I have a stronger magnet, so I make this magnet a bigger magnet, then what I'll get is extra field lines between here and here, because we say that the number of field lines is proportional to the strength of the magnet. So if I have a stronger magnet, then I'm going to cut more field lines every second, which means I'll get a bigger voltage. Similarly, if I move faster, then I'm going to cut through more of these field lines, so I'm going to get more current, because it's the rate, so it's the amount of field lines cut per second. And 
if I have extra wires next to each other, let's just get rid of this, if I put an extra wire, extra wire, extra wire, extra wire, each of those wires will be cutting through field lines, so I'll get more current again. So if I have more coils, I'll get more current. Now, what we have to remember, though, is in the exam you might be asked to find the direction of current. When you're asked to find the direction of current, what you need to know is that it you have to use still Fleming's rule, but before we were using Fleming's left-hand rule. When we're generating a current, when we're putting motion in and getting a current out, we have to use our right hand. So, left, Fleming's left-hand rule. Fleming's left-hand rule is used for motors. Fleming's right-hand rule is used for generators. See how I remember that? So you remember, you've got left and right. If you're generating a current, if you're putting the motion in and getting a current out, you have a generator and you use your right hand. If you are putting current in and you're getting motion out, you use the left-hand rule. Now, why is that? This comes down to the idea of Lenz's law. Lenz's law tells us that an induced current, that's one that we're making with a generator, will oppose the change that caused it. So let's think back to this example. Here's my wire, and I'm going to move it down uh, from top to bottom. So, first of all, which rule do we need to use? If I'm making a current, which rule is it? I'm going to have to use the right-hand rule, because this is a generator. Now, is my what I want to know is, is the current that I induce going to come out of the page or into the page? Well, get your right-hand rule. I want my first finger to point in the direction of the magnetic field. That's going left to right. Um, and I don't know which direction the current will be, so I can't point my second finger, but I do know the direction of the motion is down the page. So, keeping my first finger pointing in the field direction, I'm going to rotate my hand until my finger's pointing in the right direction. That's right, until my, my thumb is pointing in the right direction. Sorry, my thumb's pointing down the page. And if you're following along at home, you should see that the current is going to come out of this page or screen. And indeed, there's a little dot there. Now, why is that? Well, let's just think. If there is a current flowing through this, what's that going to do? Well, now I've said that I've got a wire sitting in here with a current coming through it. We know what happens when we have a current in a magnetic field. It produces a force. What hand do we need for that? This one needs the left hand. So using your left hand rule, first finger points that way, second finger is the current, and that comes out. So there's going to be a force opposing that change. And if you think about it, that makes total sense, because what does a generator do? A generator generates electricity. We use it to make power. Now, if I could just spin a generator, and it never tried to stop me, I could make free energy forever. And we know that one of the fundamental rules of physics is that energy can never be created or destroyed. And if this wire didn't oppose me pushing it down, it wouldn't uh, it, wouldn't, it would violate that rule. Something has to try and stop me. I have to push against my wire to make it generate electricity and give me energy. So that ex kind of explains why I have a left-hand rule and a right-hand rule. <coughs> now, for your exam, you need to know about the difference between alternating current and direct current. So alternating current is this blue line here, and it's what you get from batteries. And it's the reason why we often use batteries in physics, um, because it's actually quite difficult to get uh, pure DC any other way. So pure DC is really, con really simple. If I have time and voltage, DC just stays constant. Alternating current, called AC, so I'll just remind you here, this means alternating current. That goes positive to negative. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. And you might have wondered, well, why on earth do we use AC? 
Well, it comes down to this idea. It's the idea of a dynamo. First of all, I've got my north side pointing this way, my south side pointing that way. But after half a turn, now I'll have my south side over here and my north side on the other side. So what will happen is the current was coming out this way. Then as it changes, the current's going to go the other way. So my voltage is going to go positive, negative, positive, negative. So some generators will give me, well, in fact, nearly all generators will give me alternating current because as my coil flips over, it starts cutting the field lines in another way. The exception is something like this. If I use a split ring commutator, then I'll see this because if you think, whatever's on this side is always connected to here. Whatever's on this side is always connected to this side. And if you think, whatever's on this side is always going to be generating current coming down the page, whatever's on the other side will always be generating current coming out of the page. But when the motor is this is straight up, yeah, so the it's kind of going like that, rather it's at the moment it's like this, when it goes like that, then if you think about the rate of cutting field lines, yeah, there are my field lines. When it's straight up, it's not actually cutting any field lines, it's moving along field lines. It only cuts field lines as it comes down. So when it's right at the top here, there's actually no voltage produced. Yeah, that would be when it's at the top position. This will be when it's uh, top or, let's say, uh, vertical. These bits will happen when it's horizontal. And my voltage will change. Now, this comes down to the type of commutator that I use. So again, I will have, we will in lessons go through this. Um, but if I have this type, a, a, split, a split ring commutator, then I get direct. Sorry, I get uh, DC. I, this dodgy kind of DC, though. It's only ever going in one direction, but it still goes zero to high, zero to high. If I have this type called a slip ring, then I will get AC. And I'll explain that a little bit more when I see you.